Welcome back to another episode of the Sacred Leadership Podcast. I have my soul sister, Steph Smadili, joining me today from the British Virgin Islands. Or you're in US, right? US Virgin Islands? Yeah, US. Yeah, yeah. okay. We just found out that Steph's actually in the same time zone as me. She's Eastern Standard Time. I was like, what time is it there? And she's like, it's 2 p.m., the same as it is there. You know, you learn something new every day. Um, Steph has actually been on a journey of self-discovery for the last decade. She reclaimed her soul through yoga, understanding her stars, and many more paths of self-study. Steph works with her clients through coaching, cacao ceremonies, healing workshops, and yoga classes. She loves to bridge the gap between who you are and who you want to become as she creates a safe and supportive container to explore yourself on an intimate level. Steph works Uh, Steph's work allows you to seek clarity and alignment within yourself and from that place, find the balance and abundance all around you. Her motivation and inspiration alone will propel you into higher joy and empowerment. Steph is also the founder of Sacred Sips Cacao and continues to spread the ancient heart healing plant medicine throughout the world. Steph, you are like somebody I didn't know that I needed to know. And we ended up in the same group program, which anyone who's listened to any episodes, um, hears me talk a lot about shadow work and Danielle Massey and create your light Academy. Uh, Danielle, if you're listening to this, please give me a kickback or some type of percentage. (laughs) Um, (laughs) we love you. We're so thankful. Um, Steph is actually somebody that I met through that program. We were both in the same cohort, um, at the same time. And we got, really close just because we did a lot of really deep work during that time. And you're just uncovering a lot, sharing a lot. There's a lot of uh, group support that happens. And then I was actually able to connect with Steph in person at last year's Selfish Philly conference, give her a hug, hang out, all that good stuff right before she got married and went on an epic honeymoon. Um, And in that time, you were also building a secret empire, which we're going to talk about (laughs) a little bit more. Um, And so for the people who have not met you yet and need to know a little bit more about how you actually got to be this island goddess cacao sipping, you know, ceremony holder, uh, where did you kind of start things out and how did you even end up here? Thank you. Yeah, it happened way before the island, that's for sure. (laughs) It was a, a long journey. I would say everything kind of started to shift around college. I'm very grateful for my two older sisters who were very into yoga and wellness. One is a registered dietitian, so she was always kind of bringing in wellness on a physical food level um, from a, from a very young age for me. And then from there, I started to notice a little bit deeper um, what needed to shift and that something wasn't really in alignment. Started doing yoga in college and before college, actually, and So I've been on this 10-year journey, more than 10 years, of just really trying to understand who I am, (laughs) like what what's happening in here and why am I here, you know? And and through that journey, I've been I've been really grateful and blessed to meet a lot of other people on the same journey and also to influence and help people further on their journey. So it's been it's been quite a ride. I'm so grateful that you're here too on this path with me. (laughs) And it's interesting because I think that, and I was actually talking to a lot of my coaching clients about this, this upcoming week where we have so much awareness now of feeling like, okay, like I, I want more out of my life. I don't want to know what that actually is. And like, how do I figure out my purpose or how do I figure out what my next step is? And a lot of people get really wrapped up in like having to have it all figured out, right? That we almost forget that we don't have to have it all figured out. We just need to follow the breadcrumbs, right? It's just kind of like make one aligned choice. And then from that, you can make another aligned choice. So going back into, you know, college stuff, who's just like, what's this yoga business all about? Um, How did those little like soul journey breadcrumbs start to show up in your life? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So many. I was such a lost soul. And I have such compassion for little Steffi now because she was just in so much pain and just didn't know what was right, what what was real, really. <laughs> and um, yeah, I still remember I was sitting in the like the parking garage in Philly of Trader Joe's talking to my dad, and he was like, 
what are you doing with your life? Like, what's going on, girl? And I was like, uh, just sobbing. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do people know? Like, I just don't have any idea. Like, what's going on? So that's where it started. That is kind of where it started, where just this like rock bottom of failing classes. I would be, I was, I, my report cards in college were so crazy because I would have A's in the classes that I liked and then F's in the classes that I didn't like because I just didn't care. And I just, I just didn't care. And, and it's so stark that like, I wouldn't put the effort in. Like, obviously I have the brains in here and would get the grades that you needed to. And then other times, like you just would check out. And that was, I've always been a person of extreme opposites. So that's also been a journey to balance that out. But yeah, so I would just kind of follow what felt good and what I enjoyed. And I've been a pretty happy person my whole life and a lot of things bring me joy. So I would just start to follow that. I loved hanging out with friends. I loved talking and listening to friends. And that's kind of where the space holding began. Like I would just be a good listener, you know, and I would sit and and listen for hours and not like try to one up my friends in college. And, you know, it just started (laughs) out small. And then I would start to work. I actually worked at Lululemon in in college too. <laughs> Talking a lot about college, but I worked at Lululemon and that really broadened my horizon of wellness. Like these people had their their lives in order, their ducks in a row and I was like I want to be like that. Like I I certainly don't feel like I have my whole life together and they when you work there, they invite you to do a vision board. It's it's their way of doing a vision board and you write out goals for one year, five year and 10 years. And I can honestly say that was the first time I've ever thought about 10 years in the future. Mm. I was just so lost <laughs> and in my own like day to day of chaos. And I'll share with you my 10 year goal from Lululemon 10 years ago was living in a sunny location in the U.S. with the love of my life, working for myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so. So like, that, check, check, check. Check, check, check. So the power of manifestation and setting realistic goals is, you know, it's real. It works. So yeah, from there, it was just little, little encounters that made me feel good. And I would do, I did a yoga class. I was like, oh, that made me feel very relaxed. All right. And I went back and I met another person and another teacher that I resonated with, followed her to her studio, tried out things that she liked. And then she would talk about astrology. She's like, oh, I know nothing about astrology. Let me learn about that. And I would always be hungry to learn about things that made people feel good. And mm. yeah, that just led me on this journey of Svedyaya and really deepening my practice of self-discovery. Um, yeah, it's been really fun and, and so very So what intense. was that fun <laughs> word that you just shared? Your journey of what? <laughs> <laughs> Svedyaya. So yeah, Svedyaya, what is that? Oh, it has such a deep place in my heart. Um, Svedyaya is a Sanskrit word. Svedyaya is the word and it means the study of self and self discovery. Mm. Um, and it's one of the eight limbs of yoga. It's actually part of one limb. Um, and it's this, it's this beginning concept, fundamental concept in the philosophy of yoga that you need to master your energy in order to succeed. So in this, okay, (laughs) in this process and journey of Svedyaya, you have to understand who you are, the way that you work, the way you interpret energy, the way you output energy, and how that all connects to your success. That's my interpretation of Svedyaya. You will not find that (laughs) in a textbook, Um, and. That led me on this journey of exploring more about astrology, 
Enneagrams, human design, like all of these personality tests, um, Mm Myers-Briggs, I had to take that in school, Mm -hmm. all of these things that tell you who you are. Like I was like, yes, the answer, the answer, the answer, (laughs) like one one one-stop shop. And of course, it's not that. And of course, it's not outside of you. But all of these things really helped to flavor who and what I'm working with and who I am. Um, Yeah, it's been. And then I actually created a program called the Svedyaya series because, again, I'm like, I can't be the only one who is struggling with this Mm -hmm. identity, like feeling this big soul energy not knowing what to do with it, not knowing how to embody it. Like I, oh, I, yes, need, to find, <laughs> I need to find my people. <laughs> this is way before you guys came on the scene. By the way. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I had a really beautiful, it was my signature group program was this Fedyaya series. And it was every month we would dive into a different way to understand yourself. And we did inner child work and, astrology, shadow work, like all of these different ways of um, tapping in to yourself Mm. and X, you know, um, shutting out the noise of the external, because that's, that's really how you understand yourself in the beginning years is all of this external sensory information, then you kind of piece together. And, and then, you, you know, you unlearn that and realize who you actually are. Right? Um, Yeah, I think that that is is such an amazing piece that a lot of us skip over because we think like, okay, like as an adult, like I have a fully formed identity. Yeah, you do. But how much of that identity is actually in alignment with your deepest truth? Probably not as much as you might think, because literally from the time that we enter into this world, we're given all of these constructs and narratives and rules and guidelines and, you know, different archetypes that we're supposed to follow because we come in here being like, I don't know how to do this human thing. And then there's all these other humans that are here who are like, oh, no problem. We'll tell you how to do it, which, okay, great. Thanks for the help. However, they're going to tell you how they've experienced it or how people told them to experience it. So we're just passing on these masks essentially and these templates and it's not really inviting people to be like, oh, well, you don't know how to do the human thing? No problem. Let's look inside and see like how your particular soul would like to express itself as a human being. No one's really doing that, right? Parents are like, you know, girls wear dresses, boys wear this, you know, you you should do this. Everyone in our family are dental hygienists, like whatever that might be, right? Everybody's family of origin comes with a different set of expectations and stories and a different, you know, kind of book of narratives, if you will. And we're just so infused with these because it's our initial blueprint. It's our initial wiring that when we get to adulthood and we're experiencing generalized anxiety or like we feel like something's not quite right, we don't even go back to think, oh, well, maybe it's actually I'm not existing in the world in a way that actually feels congruent with my truth. So being able to utilize these tools like astrology or inner child work, or even a Myers-Briggs personality test to learn more about who you really are. So you can start to question those narratives and decide what you want to keep, what you want to change, what you want to throw away. So I'm really curious in your self-discovery work, what were some of the biggest realizations for you as you started to learn about yourself and your truth apart from the you that you were kind of like conditioned to be? Mm, I love that. Beautiful question. Um, so as I was on this Fedyaya journey, I was, uh, you know, resonating with these things, but then it kind of started to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, oh, so I'm a Sagittarius, so I have to be this way. I have to. And it was that same cycle of like people telling me who I am. I'm like, Ooh, right, okay. how do we get here again? Lots of <laughs> <laughs> like the next level of the same stuff. So um So then I really, I started to do some of the shadow work and I took this program that was really pivotal for my business. And a lot of the journey beforehand, before this business started was inner work, of course, because Mm -hmm. the business is an extension of us and I needed a really clean house before I I created something. So Mm -hmm. what it boiled down to through meditation, yoga has been like my best friend throughout 
all the ups and downs. It's really been there for me through and through. I always say I'm a yogi first before I'm a goddess or a priestess or whatever, a cacao queen. <laughs> so, um, so through like finding the stillness in yoga and really connecting with my soul energy, it always came back to love. It mm. was always the core of who I was and who I am and who I will be. When I was little, like I would just say, I love you to my mom over and over and over again. And she'd be like, okay, Steffi, like, thank you. Go play. <laughs> I'm like, but I love you. <laughs> and it was just this overwhelming outpouring of love that has been the mm. constant in my life. And um, yeah, so that was really, that was the one thing that I, I knew was true. Everything else felt kind of true. But I knew that love was a huge part of who I was. And and then I – so I, that kind of enters – cacao enters in around that point too. <laughs> um, I was introduced to cacao 10 years ago, right around the same time as, you know, all of this was starting. Mm -hmm. My sister and I took a cruise. It was called the Zen Cruise. They don't run that anymore, but it was pretty epic. Oh, I was about to be like, give me details. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> this is a Zen Cruise. We were hu – still are – huge Trevor Hall fans, and he was headlining. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, my God, we have to go on this cruise. So we went, and um, it was a three – it was a long weekend, cruise to Mexico. We did a cacao ceremony. It was like 500 people in Mexico, in the jungle, with Aztec um, – people leading the ceremony they did all of this incredible like ritualistic you know ceremony rituals and I was like what is this I remember so we had cacao and it was so beautiful and then we did a group om and I swear the the om of 500 people like I was shook about to say earth. like that <laughs> Because I, I, I've been to very small cacao ceremonies, like maybe maybe twenty people max. So I'm just imagining like just that heart center being so like open and connected, and then 500 people in like Aztec ruins, like ha having a whole like collective om. Like I, ooh, I I have goosebumps right now just even thinking about that. It was so powerful, and I never forgot that. And I was like, this is this is something. So tuck that experience in my pocket and continued on my journey and my life and still practicing yoga, started doing more shadow work, really tapped into um, more of the darker, deeper aspects of, of myself and integrated a lot of that because I've always been keen to live in the light. Um, that was always very easy for me. And, you know, so we needed to balance that out with shadow um, which is a beautiful journey and it's always still journeying. Um, and then when I moved to the island, which is really like the start of my spiritual awakening, I, I, I call everything before the island like self-development. And then we moved here and that was when the spiritual awakening cracked me open and my soul just started shining in ways that I never knew possible. <laughs> um, so when I moved here, I was reintroduced to cacao and there are beautiful practitioners here that really um, accelerated my journey with cacao. And then at that point, I, I wanted a more intimate relationship. So I asked, I was like, can you connect me with the people that you know, and in, in Guatemala, actually, she was like, yeah, of course. And, um, so I've started building a relationship with them and working with them like one-on-one -on -one and kind of doing this mentorship and having very experiential um, ceremonies. Like just I started practicing with cacao daily and dropping in and meditating with cacao um, on a daily basis for about two years and just noticed so many shifts in the essence of love. Cacao is a heart healer. So all of those intense um, college wounds, high school, like childhood, unconsciousness, like all of that, that lives within our body, within our organs. It's not just our heart. All of this trauma lives within our organs. Organs hold 
all of our experiences, they tell our stories. Mm -hmm. So really allowing the space. And I'm so blessed to have this beautiful island. It's the best space holder I've ever encountered. (laughs) And just allowing nature to hold space for me while I really was diving deep into all parts of my body and actually had a lot of trauma in my gallbladder right around our engagement. And in Chinese medicine, the gallbladder and the liver um, are, they represent vision, like your vision. And it was this overhaul of like what my vision, what I've been envisioning for my life. Mm. And now that it's come to fruition, like what, what new vision is going to take place? And it was just this huge cleaning out of my gallbladder, literally, <laughs> and, and, and energetically um, that all of this kind of helped play into. And then I was like, you know what? I was leading a lot of cacao ceremonies at that point, And I would sell the big blocks, the big um, cacao paste blocks. And after my, my ceremonies, people would be so eager and they would buy a block and they would take it home. They're like, we're going to do this every day too. And I'm like, great, that's what I do. And it's been what worked wonders. And then I would touch base with them later and they wouldn't touch the block. They did, it's still sitting in their cabinet, wrapped up. They didn't touch it. And I'm like, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. Like we just, I don't know. I like, got a little intimidated by it. And just like all of these weird little stories kept coming mm. in. I was like, this is strange. <laughs> I wonder like what, what's happening there. So this idea dropped in when I was having cacao one day of like creating a smaller little mold, like a small, cute little like gumdrop to just have them drop into their cacao, into their hot water and make cacao, like really remove all of the obstacles Mm -hmm. for them to receive this medicine because it is so powerful. And, and once you really connect with it, there will be no obstacles of connecting with it further. So I wanted to bridge the gap between the people who had some stories or limits to get to that place of really engaging with the medicine. Mm. So I was like, why don't we just make these little cacao drops. <laughs> and that's what we did. So now we have sacred sips and I call them little siplets and they're this cute little, cute little molds. They come in different flowers and it just makes, it's really, it's geared for beginners who are uh, on their healing journey that want a little bit more of a gentle plant medicine to work with. Um, it's the perfect, perfect ally. So speaking of beginners, I'm sure that we definitely have people listening to this episode that are like, what the heck is cacao? I thought that it was just like another kind of like chocolate or um, sometimes people are like, that's like just healthy hot chocolate, right? Or, you know, we go to like the juice place and we get like a smoothie with cacao nibs on top and we're like, okay, like that's, it's kind of like healthy chocolate, right? And I have realized that, you know, a lot of the knowledge that I've come to gain essentially about cacao has really come through just saying yes to being a part of cacao ceremonies and being educated by people who are choosing to really sit with and be stewards of this medicine. But I would love for you just as, you know, a cacao queen to share a little bit about where does it come from? What is it actually? And what is it about this particular plant that helps our bodies physically, but also emotionally and spiritually as well? Ooh, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, it's so powerful. It's okay. So it comes from, <laughs> um, a few different areas in the world, mainly Central America. Um, but it is found in other parts of the world. We actually have some cacao trees in the Caribbean as well, which is so special. Um, and it's an ancient plant healing medicine. So they, traced cacao back to like ancient civilizations, obviously, like the Mayans have had cacao as part of their ceremonies. They actually wouldn't have cacao ceremonies. That's like a very new age thing, but they would have cacao present at um, these different rite of passage ceremonies during their their communities and their lives um, as just kind of like celebratory because it enhance it's it's like a mood enhancer and it just it's like a family member like it just makes you feel 
like you belong. It connects you with that love essence that already is within you. It, it really imbibes that out of you. And, um, it's just really special. So a little bit of the science behind cacao, there's an active ingredient called theobromine. And um, that's really, that's the the vehicle behind cacao. And it, it helps to enhance the blood vessels that go to the heart. So you get about 20% more oxygen pumping through the heart when you're engaging with cacao. So that can give you the energy. There is a little bit of caffeine in there, but theobromine is really what gives you that energy. And some people feel really relaxed. Some people feel like that, um, that high, that boost of energy. Um, it really affects everyone differently. And what I've noticed is it affects you differently depending on where you are on your journey. Mm. So in the beginning, it would give me a lot of That energy. makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's really funny. I have a friend here who feels so relaxed when she has cacao. And I'm like, really? Because I'm like, go, 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 super chatty, like, <laughs> you know, just moving and shaking. And and we kind of explored it a little bit more. And her baseline is very active, very like divine masculine, like Shiva running around, generator energy. And then mine, I'm very feminine and, um, you know, calm, like very – um, you know, just my baseline is very calm and still. So I need that activation to like keep me going and get me up and out of bed and meditation. <laughs> so or else I'd be sitting in meditation all day. Um, but yeah, that's so it depends where you are and, and for how she will work with you. Mm. And it also cacao is such a beautiful um, agent to healing. So since the heart is expanded, that 20% blood flow and oxygen is really opening your heart up energetically and emotionally, you're able to access the trauma and the, the stories, the life experiences that are living within there still. Mm -hmm. It's all energy. So you're able to really play with that, dance with that, and get it up and out of your body so you can call in more of what you're looking for and what you're longing for. That's that's part of the medicine. Yeah. I. It's so helpful to hear you describe this because when I was living in Austin, there was something, somebody shared that they were going to be part of a community cacao ceremony. And I was just like, I know nobody here. Um, these probably are my people. So like, I'm just going to show up and see what this is all about. <laughs> um, and I went to this cacao ceremony and this was, it had been, I'm probably going to say about nine months after um, I suddenly lost my dad. And I'm thinking like, I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to drink some, you know, hot chocolate adjacent, whatever. And I'm going to meet people and it's going to be great. Um, so, you know, we get our cacao, we're sitting in a circle and, you know, we're invited to just sit with the cacao and just breathe it in. Right. I haven't even taken a sip of this stuff. I'm just like breathing it in. There's just like some light music in the background and I'm just sitting there breathing in this cacao and tears just start streaming mm. down my face. Like those just like hot, heavy tears that your body, you know, is just like pouring something out of you. And I'm just sitting there holding this cup, shaking but like, and I was completely like, I, I didn't even know if there was anybody else still in the room or not. It was just me and this cup of this stuff that was making me just <laughs> sob. And it was just so like, I felt hot everywhere. And it was just all this stuff just started moving. And we went around as we were sipping and we were invited to share if we wanted to. And I just started speaking all of this heaviness that had been on my heart that I didn't even know. Um, because after my dad died, I went right into this kind of energy where I was like, I'm going to take every care of everyone. I planned my dad's funeral. I took it. I like was the person that called all the family members. You know, I made sure my mom had everything that she needed. And I was just like, go, 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 go. And I hadn't really given myself a chance to really sit with my grief. Um, a, I didn't really want to, and B, like there was too much to do and too many other people to take care of. And there was nowhere to hide. Like this medicine invited me to just open up in a way that I didn't feel forced to do it. It was just comfortable. I felt held. I felt safe to just let this go. And I didn't even realize how 
heavy my chest had been until that weight was lifted. I sobbed in a way that I have not sobbed probably since I was a child for mm, probably about an hour straight. And like everyone there was like, you know, releasing things and supportive. And I, there was a, just a room of strangers and everyone was so sweet and just wonderful. And it was this incredible experience. I felt lighter than air afterwards. I was like, this, this is amazing. Okay. This, there's something a little bit more than healthy hot chocolate going on here. Um, and so that's when like, I really started to want to learn more. Cause I'm somebody who's very sensitive to substances. So like going right into, you know, using mushrooms or, you know, ayahuasca or any other type of like plant medicine. Um, I have sat with combo, but it, it just really seems kind of intimidating to me, but cacao was just so gentle and nourishing and mm. expansive, right? It just really like, I, I felt like the Grinch at the end of the movie where it's like, and his heart grew like, you know, how <laughs> many sizes. And so I felt yes. after this cacao ceremony, I was like, wow, there's so much space in here. There's just like so much space now. Mm -hmm. And it was it's just such an amazing thing. And I, I was like, wow, like this, this, if I could use this with like all of my therapy clients, like we would probably mm -hmm. be able to like move very quickly through um, yeah. whatever it is that we're, we're working through. And so I think that it's so beautiful that you are taking this and making it more accessible because it is a little bit intimidating. I too was one of those people that's like, let me buy a brick of this stuff. Um, and then I was like, okay, somebody else like did the whole, like, you know, obviously there was like a, not like a cauldron, but like there was a huge thing of the cacao at the ceremony and they had been stirring it and sending it energy and like putting like all sorts of adaptogenic herbs in it or whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and also just feeling like I was in a group setting and then now I'm like home alone. Um, and so can you speak to that part of it a little bit, just kind of how to maybe start your own, you know, relationship with cacao if you are somebody who's either interested or you have gone to a group, you know, type setting and now you want to invite it into your individual practice? Yeah. Oh, there's so much that you said. That's so so good. Um, that's, that's why one thing I want to share, that's why I really resonated with cacao because I was really intimidated with plant medicines too. Like we were going to go on a 10 day ayahuasca retreat, my sister and I, and, um, they got canceled because of COVID, but I was like, what, like, could you imagine if we actually went like, <laughs> that would have been really intense. And cacao is, it's that intense on a, on a much more gentle and subtle level. Mm. So people who are ready for the intensity of the healing, you're going to receive that healing <laughs> because you're open enough to feel the subtlety of that energy. And through practicing yoga, like one of my core pillars is like clarity. Like I don't want to take more substances to get clear. Like I want to keep clearing out to find the truth, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something that I really love about cacao because it doesn't feel like I'm layering on more external sources. It's, it's a plant ally. It's working with what I'm already working with, <laughs> what I already have in here. And it's allowing me to see that more clearly without all of this trippy, you know, I don't know, not that there's anything wrong with any other plant medicines. They're mm -hmm. all so beautiful in their own way. And I just really have resonated so deeply with cacao because it feels like my own energy. Yeah. It's very loving. It's very gentle and supportive. Yeah. That's how I am. <laughs> I love to just feel that coziness, even with the shadow work, like healing can be painful. We all know that. We all know that life is intense. Being a human is not for the faint of heart. And if we can flavor it with a little extra love and and safety, why mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. That's what cacao really is for me. It's it's a hand holding through yeah. the hard times. Yeah. I really and and that's I think really what it felt like for me experiencing it in that space was it was just this invitation, right? It was really just an invitation to be like, Hey, like if you're ready to let go of this, you can, if you're ready to release this, like I I've got you, you, you're so safe and so held. And 
also reminded me of my own capacity because I think that I had almost like shrunk my heart because I didn't want to feel the intensity of the loss that I had experienced. And I'm a very heart centered person. I walk through the world with a very open heart. That's who I am. That's how I exist in the world. And I didn't even realize that I was existing out of alignment in terms of like just my receptivity to having that open heart center. I was just so closed off and it wasn't this like forceful, like I'm going to like, you know, bang down your door and open your, you know, heart center. It was really like, Hey, like if, if you're ready to do this, like you can do this, like you, you got this. And it, it just was the gentle little nudge that I really needed to be like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I was holding this much or that I was this closed down. I can actually let this go because I, I do have like my heart space is so, so, so big. Um, Mm. and I know that, you know, my, my dad wouldn't want me to close off, you know, my heart. That's not part of the legacy that, that he would want to leave. And so feeling that just spiritual support while consuming this medicine was, and it's so gentle. Like I, you know, I drove home afterwards, like (laughs) there was no after effects. It was fine. I felt tired from all the crying, but that was really like, that was really it. Yeah, it's so powerful. And yeah, speaking to your question about how how can we take that and bring it home with us and really continue that magic that we found in ceremony. That's how I started, you know, like that 500 person ceremony was it left a lasting impression. And then coming back to it on the island, we would do a lot of breath work and cacao ceremonies. And the breath work, again, like it just when you're breathing and that heart opening medicine is present, like (laughs) you are just wide open to any and all (laughs) that wants to come through. And it's so profound. And just to be able to have that, the coupling of these medicines, the breath and the cacao is really powerful. So I love to do when I'm at home, I'll grab my cacao and my little siplets and I'll drop them into my hot water or plant milk, whatever you want to, whatever you prefer. They take about a minute to dissolve. So stir them in until they melt and get all luscious and gooey. And, and then I am usually praying and seeding the cacao with intention. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge part of this practice is really merging your intention with this medicine because Mm -hmm. you're ingesting it. It's going to be part of you. So of course you want to kind of program it to what you're wanting to work with. And that's, that's another conversation for another day of how we don't do this, but it's, you can do that for everything that we consume, you know, food, Mm -hmm. water, everything. So always putting an intention into the cacao, really allowing the intention to merge with the cacao with the waters of the cacao so that it can merge with your waters of your body and then really come become one and embodying that intention for the day for the week I have a friend who does the same intention until she sees it through (laughs) which is really powerful so you can do that whatever aligns with your um priority that's that's what you want but you just want to make sure that you're in the driver's seat you want to seed to what you're looking for and you're desiring. Um, And then I sing to the cacao and then I do my meditation with the cacao, which hopefully we can do at another time, a full ceremony. The way I do it is really, it's beautiful. And then, um, and then sitting with it. So cacao can be active in your system for like four to eight hours. So you can do, um, I really love to do, Kundalini yoga is like Mm -hmm. the best (laughs) activating pair with cacao if you're really looking to clear out space. If you want to like more healing, like if if you are experiencing grief or just want relief in any way, just a gentle meditation, like just sitting in a comfortable place or even laying down with hands on heart and hands on belly or womb, whatever feels best. And just holding yourself, allowing the tears to come. Like there's no wrong way to work with this medicine. And it that's a huge part of it. It's the allowing your intuition to work with the spirit of the cacao to 
rewire your being. That's the medicine. And allowing yourself to be open is sometimes the hardest part. So those are some ways that I really love to practice. I love singing, chanting, or sounding with cacao because I've had so much throat (laughs) blockage in this lifetime. So much. Um, So that's been a really powerful practice for me to just really open through my voice, like really bust through those blockages in the throat chakra and allow myself to be expressed the way I want to. Um, So that's always really fun. Um, I had a harmonium. I was like babysitting a harmonium for a couple months and, and the healing was just overflowing (laughs) from my throat. So yeah, there's just really beautiful ways to couple other healing modalities with cacao. Like if you have a, you know, something that really works for you, layering cacao in with that can really just elevate and expedite the whole process of healing. Mm, That is so beautiful. And I love so many like different access points to really being able to take this practice in and interact with it and make it your own. And it is so obvious that you are just so incredibly passionate and that being a voice and a spokeswoman for this medicine is absolutely part of your calling and your purpose here this time around. And so, you know, obviously the name of this podcast is the Sacred Leadership Podcast. And you have like a company now, you have a product, you're you're literally helping to get this into the hands of as many people as you can, but working backwards, where did you just kind of, kind of get the guts to be like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And what was that process actually like for you to step into leadership in that really big way? Yeah. It's hard. (laughs) It was, it's a challenge. Um, I actually, (laughs) such a beautiful, thank you for that. Um, And Cacao, she is persistent. I have opened myself up to her many, many times in service and she, she guides me. So so this is all her doing. (laughs) I'm just a conduit working, working on the earth plane um, alongside her mission. But yeah, it's been such a, such a journey of, imposter syndrome, like who Mm. am I little white girl to be spreading this ancient medicine of indigenous people that I'm not one of, you know, like all of these, all of these obstacles have come my way and, and it almost knocked me off course. It actually did for a day. I was like, Drew, my husband, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like I'm not I can't like I'm I was so there was one situation that just really knocked me off course and I was like this is not what I wanted for this this is like way too painful way too intense like all of these things that I didn't feel worthy enough of bringing cacao like I just didn't Mm. feel it and I was like, I had a good run. Sacred Sips is adorable and I love her to death. And today's the last day I'm going to be doing this business. <laughs> and then I woke up the next day and I was like, oh, hell no. Like no one and no thing, no thing will ever get in the way of me living out this service. It was such a... A come to Jesus moment of like, this is, this is what builds a leader. Like you mm-hmm. can't, whew, you can't, I'm like sweating now. Cause that was such an intense experience and it wasn't that long ago. And I had already done a lot of the work to bring sacred sips to life. And I was just, I threw it all away for the day. And I was like, wow, how weak can I be? Or like, how much more do I need to build to not be broken down with this one interaction or whatever. So I sat with Cacao. We had a really intense conversation <laughs> and, and like just really vowed to myself. I vowed to myself not to let my ego get in the way anymore. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> 
because this is soul work. Mm-hmm. This is soul work. And my ego took a beating mm-hmm. <laughs> and it hurt for days, still hurts. It's There's still wounds there that I'm working through and probably will for a, a long time. I have a mentor who's been doing this for a while and he still says that he feels this, these wounds from time to time. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. And that's not why I'm doing this. It's It needs to happen is why I'm doing this. Mm. <laughs> People need to have the medicine more accessible. They need to start their journeys. They need to sit with themselves because at the end of the day, you're all you have. Mm-hmm. So if you, ha- if you don't nurture your own inner garden or temple, it's not going to be a nice place. And when all of the distractions fade away at the end of this lifetime, I want people to feel peace and not anxiety or overwhelm or shame or guilt, you know, and we have the power to give ourselves peace. Oh, now. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Channel it through stuff. Channel it through. All right. Literally just that little sound bite right there. Like that, if you listen to nothing else from the Sacred Leadership Podcast, just just that right there, um, more than enough. That was just so beautifully said. And I could I could just feel like the direct line to spirit as you were speaking those words, because that is the truth. And so many of us here now on this plane in this time are called for greatness, really. Like we are called and and greatness doesn't mean that you're, you know, some worldwide celebrity or anything like that. It can literally just mean, you know, self-leadership or being a phenomenal conscious parent. It, It doesn't matter. It could be that, you know, you are like the nicest bagger at the grocery store and you make everyone's day better. It, it does not matter, but we are being called to elevate our consciousness, our connection to one another, our connection to the collective energy. And it is not easy because everything in this meat suit, everything that is in the biology of this meat suit is geared towards survival. And when we think about what we are surviving, we have every reason to allow fear to run the show, our ego to run the show, our biological needs to run the show. All of that stuff really doesn't care about spiritual expansion or, you know, if you feel like you're living in your purpose, our physical human self really doesn't actually align to that type of work. So there's going to be pushback on a visceral level, not to mention the type of resistance that we come against when we're being tested, right? It's like, okay, so cool. That's cute, Steph. You want to like, you know, bring cacao to the masses. Nice. Awesome. Are you serious? Do you really mean it? Let's find out, right? And that's when like you're going to have the moments where you really have to go inward and know beyond a shadow of a doubt this is my calling. This is my purpose. And there is nothing that can deter me from that because I know it doesn't matter if I only have one person at one time that buys one packet of little siplets from me. At least Mm -hmm. I change things for that one person. And even if no one buys it, at least I am putting this out there for it to be made available. I know that I'm doing more than enough. And whatever happens after that really doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. It's not up to us. It's not in our control. And it has nothing to do with whether we're in or out of our purpose. That That is all just kind of like, cool, you can get a nice little pat on the back. And like, we all like that. That feels nice. Of course, of course, it would be really cool if the universe rewarded us with like hundreds of millions of dollars and like worldwide, you know, fame and success. Awesome. Cool. If that's something that feels good for you. But also like that is no way, shape or form to measure, if you will, whether we're on purpose, whether we're in alignment, whether we're following our calling. That's something only you can know deep in your soul. And it's going to be tested. There's going to be things that come up that are like, just give up. It'd be so much easier to give up. Yes, it would be so much easier to give up. It'd be so much easier. But I know for you, for me, for people who have really heard their calling, you can't ignore it. You just, you can't ignore it. There's no, once you're like awake and aware, you you can't turn back. It's just not an option. So I love that for a day you were like, just kidding. Yeah. Like that really would have worked out for you. (laughs) Uh, It's cute. It's cute that I thought that. Yeah. Because it would have found me in another way if I didn't, you know, reroute. But 
Yeah, it's so true. It's so powerful. Like we, we need those enlightened grocery store workers. We need enlightened people in every sector of the earth. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be these spiritual coaches or teachers. Like, no, we need enlightened lawyers and teachers and truck drivers and chefs. Like everyone needs to heighten the awareness, build that awareness within themselves to elevate the planet. Like that's where we're heading. Um, and cacao really helps you. It's like the cheat sheet. <laughs> it really, it makes it fun and it makes it softer and, and just a more lovely experience. It really does. Mm. Cause I've done it without it. And it's, yeah, I've, I've done the legwork. <laughs> Highly recommend cacao for healing <laughs> purposes. And it also is, we didn't talk about this yet, but it is a superfood. Mm. It's like mm -hmm. so crazy healthy for you on a physical level as well. It's packed with magnesium and um, flavonoids for every, anyone who knows what that is. It's like a really powerful agent to help the body thrive because these bodies are built to be in optimal function. And mm -hmm. the reality is we don't live that way. We live in chronic pain and that's yeah. not the way we're built. It's the way we choose to continue to live. So really reclaiming that choice to live in wellness, to live in pleasure and supplying our machines with the aid that they need to work in optimal function. Mm. It starts with our choice. It's not just about spiritual healing. It's about physical healing. Yes. This does healing on all levels. <laughs> I always, our, our little catch line at, tagline at Sacred Tips is health and healing and one sip at a time because it really does. It does, it does wonders. Yeah. And that is where I think that really for me, sacred leadership is so much about really looking at leadership as a holistic calling. It's not just a job title that you put on, you know, when you're bossing other people around, like that's not leadership. Leadership is really someone who's choosing to show up and live intentionally. And that means that we are being good stewards of our energy, of our physical body, of our emotions, of our nervous system, all of these things that go into being able to show up in leadership, to hold space for other people, to not be reactive to go through and do the deep inner word inner work so you're really in alignment with your calling it it is really a whole body whole mind whole emotion whole spirit type of experience if you're really truly stepping into leadership and i strongly feel especially after hearing you speak about this Cacao is like one of those things that can really, really help all of us, but especially anyone who's listening to this that is on that journey to be a fully embodied sacred leader. This is something that's really going to help you give that gift to yourself to not only take care of yourself physically, but also emotionally, also spiritually, and then also softening. And I love that you said like, make it a little bit more cozy, right? Like that, that inner work doesn't have to be this like, Oh, okay. I'm doing shadow work today and it's going to be horrible and I'm prepared for it. like, it doesn't have to be that. And that's, I, you know, one of my favorite quotes is that like pain is part of the human experience, but suffering is, is a choice. Suffering is, is optional. And so yes, we can experience the, the pain, because that's part of the spectrum of emotions that we're gifted as, you know, a human being and having that human experience, but like how hard and arduous and taxing it is, that part, we actually do get to choose how we're going to exist in relationship to it. So if you have these tools, right, this ancient wisdom, that is this tool that has essentially been given to us by mother earth to help aid us on this journey, why would you not use it? Just saying. <laughs> Seriously, it's really a conversation about responsibility. It's being responsible for your own energy, your own healing. Yes. We often want to outsource the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Guilty. Mm -hmm. Guilty as charged. <laughs> and it, it always comes back to you. And once you realize that, that you can't outrun the challenging things of being a human, you become more responsible with your energy and you get to 
deal with it on your own terms, Mm -hmm. like really sitting with something that's hard, giving it the time, holding space for it, having cacao and working through it in a solution based mindset. That's responsible road rage and like, you know, cursing your neighbor because you're in a bad mood, like that's irresponsible. And I think that's what really draws the line between people who are on their healing journey or not unconscious people and sacred leaders because they've vowed to be responsible for their energy and to lead by example for others who are aspiring to be at peace because that's the goal. Yes. (laughs) We're all looking for peace and ease. And that's like contradictory to what a human is, (laughs) you know, like we need to work to get to those more subtle bodies of bliss, you know, Mm. and it's, it's so important. It's so important. (laughs) (laughs) Like literally yes to all of that. Um, (laughs) And, you know, Steph, you, you are a leader in so many different aspects. There are so many different ways that you exist in service to other people. And I would love for you to just take a minute to share all of the different ways that you show up and serve your offerings and also different ways that people can interact with cacao. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's such a labor of love, um, showing up and serving because I, I received for years. I was just that eager student <laughs> showing up over and over again. And and now it's time to serve and give back. So I've actually been um, really looking into doing meditations on Insight Timer. Mm. So that's a really exciting thing coming soon. I do one-on-one coaching for um, can go. It's called Divine Creation is my coaching package. It's very pretty comprehensive. There's cacao included. So we we both are leveled out on the playing field before we dive in and just again, an accelerator. Um, so you do one-on-one coaching. I'm working on um, some new events. I do a lot on the island for this community, which is really lovely. Um, but yeah, and then of course, Sacred Sips. And that's, that's, that's my bread and butter right now. I love I love catering and stewarding sacred sips. Um, we're going to be doing a bunch of events all over the U.S., the Caribbean, and beyond. So stay tuned. Um, we just got our website up and running, and we're fully restocked because we sold out on our first run, which is so Ooh, awesome. That is so um, amazing. Yeah. And then also for those who – so if you are beginning with – cacao, I would definitely recommend getting some siplets. These are our sacred sip siplets. They're the tiny little molds of cacao. And then if you are a seasoned um, practitioner, I like to say, we are having, um, we're introducing a new product soon that's going to be more powder based um, with some different herbs and plant allies in there. We're working on lavender and rose, which is going to be Ooh, really, really okay. Powerful. So we're really going to supercharge that. Okay. Yeah, we're going to blast off into the ether. <laughs> um, and then we also, I'm working with um, one of my beautiful partners uh, on a, a cacao course. A course in cacao is going to be what it's called. And it's just to help dive into more of what this medicine is, why it's here, mm-hmm. why it's important for us to work with it. And yeah, and to really build your own practice and if you feel called to to share it. I am definitely going to be keeping an eye out for that course because I'm already Yay. very excited because that's just something where I, I love being in community. I love especially like sitting in, you know, just ceremony with other people. And I think to your point, cacao is something that really does um, – just even the playing field and really help people to have that security blanket almost to feel safe to release and let go of things and just know that they can expand as little or as much as they want to in that moment, in that time and in that space. And so the cacao really does a lot of the facilitating for you. You just have to kind of be, you know, there to be a good, a good steward of the medicine 
And I am just so grateful for you taking time today, Steph, to come and talk about your journey, to share the knowledge of, you know, the cacao and everything that you've learned and also just learn a little bit more about the benefits of it and all the different ways that we can kind of interact with it and also implement it into our own uh, leadership journeys. Yay. Oh, it's been such a pleasure. I will gladly talk about cacao whenever whenever anyone needs me to. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me and for holding this beautiful space. I think it's really powerful to, to help empower women and anyone who is, is feeling called to share and to be more of service and really to take that vow of, of sacred responsibility and showing up for your energy and then being an embodied presence of that. So thank you, Amber. I'm so proud of you. There you have it. Another episode of the Sacred Leadership Podcast on the books. I hope your time spent here served you and nourished you. Join us every Tuesday for more honest conversations and powerful insights. Remember, exceptional leaders share the wealth. Send this episode to someone who would benefit, leave a review to let others know about the show, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Talk to you soon.